Here in video 6, we're going to pick up where we left off at in video 5 on creating multi row and column tables as well as adding data tables to our web page template. Let's go ahead and get into this. And all you do is you see the cursors blinking over here. Just hold your left mouse button down inside of this one and drag it into the next one to the right. Then right click, come on down here and join selected cells. Do the same for the bottom. Got the cursor or the um, yeah, cursor's blinking right there. Left mouse button down, hold and drag to the right. Right click on either one of these cells, come on down and join selected cells. Now then we've got one, two, three, four cells instead of six. Now right here in the top cell, let's go over here and center that bad boy. Actually before we do that, let's go ahead and check out the source file again. As you can see here, we've got the a few more attributes because we've added and changed a couple of things. Again, here's a body opening tag, and we've got a couple more uh, ta table data tags or table divider tags down here. And we've defined this one as being a, the left for alignment. This is another attribute. And you can kind of see how it's defined in here. And let's go ahead and go to our normal tag. And let's insert our header and our footer images. Do that by going up here to insert image and here is the image properties and I've got this one checked, uh, checked so that the alternate text will show up in the event and, and you get, you've got the option of doing so or not doing so. If you do so then I think that's to your advantage because if you are if you have a visitor that is on a slow internet connection or a dial-up uh, setup then before your image loads, especially if it's a high intensity or a, uh, has a lot of colors or just it's a bloated image, then before it loads, the visitor will see this text here describing what they're about to see if they're patient enough to wait until it fully loads. Um, so let's go ahead. Oh, up here is the image location. You click on this folder icon to navigate your way to that particular image. So let's go ahead and do that first. And then we're working with the header. And just double click on that and it gives you a little preview of it down here with a little bit of the properties here. So here we're going to type in now this has another benefit too it's more of a search engine optimization or, a, or an SEO reason. That being that when the search engines come a looking and they want to index your website and they see this additional text and how it relates to the other content on your web page, then it may assist that a search engine or that bot, if you will, to give this a little more credence, a little more value. In turn, that would increase the ranking position of your web page because it sees that this particular image is you know these are keywords by the way or it should be uh, that this particular image is related heavily to the content in here because this is also the title this is th these words are also in the title of the page which the search engine robot found and it's also scattered throughout the content of the page so yeah this image must be pretty uh, pretty important so the search engines will give this a little more relevance so Again, it's to your benefit to add to your image the alternate text, or alt text as it's also called. Click on OK, and do the same for the bottom one here. Going up here to insert, image, footer, and again you can see the properties here. Click on OK, and let's go ahead and preview this. As you can see, it's kind of a solid image of sorts, but right here in the middle is going to be the content. That's a little bit of white, as you can see right there, just a little bit. And here it gives you a little bit of a definition as well. Of right across here is where the content's going to be. So, and as you can see, there's no defining line here to separate the left from the right column, as we can more plainly see here with these dotted red lines. And as you can see these are invisible. This is our invisible border because we gave it a zero width as far as the pixels, which is how we want it. Now then, what we want to do now is we want to shrink this guy down on the left to a more manageable size, you know, like a typical navigation bar on the left hand side of your web page. So we're going to give this, oh, let's say 150 pixels. So we can do this a couple of ways. Go ahead and right click, table cell properties. Again right here is the cell is what we want. We're going to define the width 
of 150 pixels. Now this time around we're going to go ahead and change the background color to something that will differentiate it from the right hand side. Let's go with a little more silvery color. That looks pretty cool. And hit OK and we're good. Now then, I think that's pretty much it. Let's check this out in the preview bar. And let's go ahead and save this. Just click on save. And then let's open this up in our browser. My browser of choice being Firefox from Mozilla. Let's go ahead and go to File, Open File, and navigate to where we've got this guy stashed, which is on our desktop, HTML goodies, and index. So just double click on that, and here we go. As you can see, again, we're, we've got it based on the dimensions we're working with within this video. So again, it's a little, and actually you can't see the little uh, gray bar right, right here. Let's go ahead and throw some text in there and see how that looks. Open this back up. And actually, let's put a red border on the side here and increase the size. I just hit my enter or return key a couple of times. And right here, let's find it first. Where are we at? Image, okay, that's our header image. That's the alt text. Here we go. And these are the attributes of this cell right here. As you can see, when we hit the return key, it put these BRs in there. Those are breaks. That's the additional space. And what we can do is add attributes. Again, this is the attribute defining the color of the background. And that's the RGB factor. You can also replace it with, with just silver and would be the same thing. Uh, you can replace it with the hexadecimal code as well. That's the one with the pound sign and the six-digit number after that. And then we got the width is 150 pixels. Now let's also go ahead and toss in another attribute. And oh, by the way, you separate the attributes with a semicolon and you define that attribute with uh, a colon. Just like here, you got the semicolon separating the color of the background from the width. But you've got the width actuality uh, separated from the word width, the attribute with a semicolon. So what we want to do here is inside the double parentheses, I'm sorry, double quotation mark, but outside of the semicolon, put our cursor, hit the space bar, because you can see there's a space here, hit the space bar, and we want the border right. And just as far as, well, hey, how do you know the actual words to be used for these attributes. Well, there's a couple of references you can go to on the internet. One is htmldog.com. Another one, good one, is htmlref.com. Uh, the best one, frankly, for me is the w3cschools.com, I believe it is. And I'll, those are three of the better reference points I can uh, provide you uh, that you can go to, you know, just to expand your repertoire of uh, tools for using HTML editors, or for that matter, just hand coding too. Anywho, border dash R I G H T, and going to, and we put in our little colon and space. Then we're wanting the size of this to be, let's say, three pixels. So that's three P X. And the style, we're going to go with uh, solid. Now let's go with dotted, D-O-T-T-E-D, -T -T -E space, and the color red. Sounds good. And again, here, you can also put in the hexadecimal. You can put in the RGB, uh, or just in this case, red. The browsers, most browsers nowadays, some of the older ones may not, this might not work, um, but what the heck are you doing with an Internet Explorer version 4 anyway, for crying out loud. So let's go ahead and give this a whirl, because sometimes these guys need to be, the attributes need to be spelled out in a certain order, because a lot of times the border may have to come before the background color insofar as this line is concerned. But let's give it a whirl and see what it looks like. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Okay, now then let's also save this, click on save, and let's check it out on our browser. 
and our browser is here refresh and it's over there okay so we need to put in a definition of our width here so let's go back to our table cell properties and that should do it okay let us go ahead and save preview there we go so I just did not have the definition of this particular table here so this guy here is just taking its ever loving time and stretching all the way out so now that we've got it set up to where our left navigation bar is getting a little more defined and this border here will increase as we add content here it'll just kind of just uh, expand on its own so that's pretty much it I, again I wanted to touch base on all of these elements here even though you may not be using this particular element in so far as having a left navigation bar because most folks are just have navigation links up here at the top possibly at the bottom but again I'd rather I'd rather you have this and not need it than to need it and not have it at some later point so this is going to conclude our video thank you much for watching have a great day